What's going on there, folks? Welcome back here on this Friday night. It is the Earth Master checking in here with an update video. Uh, January 12th, 2024, about 10.02 p.m. here, California time. The latest activity on the globe is a uh, green flag somewhere here, 2.6 down in South America. That's the latest earthquake on the globe. We did have quite a bit of shaking going on out in the, well, the state of Oklahoma, outside of OKC area. Uh, these are not... Uh, rare i mean well they i guess are kind of minimally rare uh, we don't see too much activity specifically around this area uh this earthquake that struck uh earlier today this evening we had a 3.2 in that mix but the largest one looks to be a 4.4 near arcadia oklahoma which is outside of the okc area to the northeast uh, it was felt uh, fairly broadly over the oklahoma city area uh, with quite a few reports coming in here to the USGS. And uh, as you can see, a lot of uh, social media reports coming in as well. I guess a few folks were asleep and uh, they were woken up by this uh, earthquake activity. If you happen to felt this earthquake, let me know what it felt like, maybe how long it lasted. And uh, I definitely appreciate the uh, scientific information uh, when it comes to uh, reporting uh, from the folks out there that felt this earthquake. 4.4. Uh, 6.7 kilometers deep. I do not like that in there, but hey, uh, that's just some numbers for now. Uh, interesting though, I did pull up uh, historical data here in the Oklahoma area, just specifically Oklahoma, 4.0 and above since records have been kept. Uh, the largest one out here in Oklahoma, I think you guys remember this back in 2016, 5.8. Uh, near the Pawnee, Oklahoma area, north of Stillwater. Uh, that one did some damage out there. Uh, also had a 5.7 back in 2011. That earthquake a little bit closer to today's um, activity. And then 1882, uh, well south, had a 5.7. Uh, and, and a couple other fives out here, right? So earthquake activity is, um, it happens. But what's really interesting about today's activity is its location. Let me zoom in here and show you guys. What do you guys see here? I know I got to tilt my head sideways too. Northeast Edmond gas and oil fields. There's a massive amount of oil fields out here in this area of Oklahoma, quite a bit. Uh, and I believe this is uh, in relation to the activity out there. A lot of folks in denial uh, with the uh, relation to earthquake activity and pumping operations, but uh, uh, it's out there. It looks like they are... Um, it's hard to say what these are. Just looking at this map is, uh, it doesn't quite look all that clear. May, it looks like maybe they've done some redevelopment out here. Uh, but according to the map here, uh, this area has had a lot of oil fields out here. So maybe, you know, maybe this is some newer activity. I don't know if these oil fields still exist. Um, or, you know, if they got covered up, maybe they got erased and capped off and, uh, there's just a whole bunch of residential houses out here. I'm not really seeing a whole lot of oil fields, but they are marked. And they were marked uh, broadly across this area. Again, right around this area where the four-pointer struck earlier this evening. Uh, let's check the satellite view. Let's zoom in here for a little bit. Hard to say, right? Those look like some houses out there now. Some development. Maybe new development. Um, Oklahoma is a growing state. OKC is a growing as well. I love the OKC area. It's been a while since I've been out there. Actually, I was just out there last year, uh, storm chasing. So I uh, can't wait to get back out there and enjoy some more storms. Uh, but yeah, it looks like a huge uh, development out here now. Uh, this area looks like some type of operation. I'm not for sure what. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say a lot of these oil pumping operations out here may be uh, erased or at least covered over now with this newer development. So either way, nine earthquakes. Again, the largest earthquake of 4.4. So far, we've seen uh, a couple of twos and some ones out there as well. Uh, there's always that possibility, potentially of seeing something larger uh, out here in this area. Uh, within this region here, I'm just gonna zoom in specifically. Uh, looks like the largest magnitude was back in 2013 for that 4.5. Uh, but no doubt this area can get bigger. 
Texas knows about it. Texas has been having a lot of earthquake activity down there in their oil fields outside of Pecos, Texas. A lot of visible oil fields here on the map. Of course, this is a little bit different, less um, vegetation. You can see these wastewater disposal ponds and the uh, pumping operations out here as well, out in the desert of Texas. Uh, and this is just today. Uh, they've had uh, a handful of earthquakes, about 10. Uh, but let me show you guys something down here in, in this area in the last 30 days. Uh, how's 531 earthquakes sound in Texas? Yes, they happen quite often, and they happen quite often in these oil fields, big time. Um, we even see oil fields further inland into Texas, down here in the south as well, a lot of oil fields. In Oklahoma, right, no stranger to oil fields. It's just It's been a little while since we've seen this area hit. I expect some more earthquakes out there. Some of them could get up there in the magnitude as well. Uh, that's just something that we have to deal with here in the future as the uh, oil fields have been in place for quite a while. Maybe some new ones, maybe some old ones. Uh, but that is, uh, that's what we have to look forward to, some earthquake activity. Uh, I don't think we're going to see any, you know, six-pointers out here. Uh, we almost did though, right? Back in the, uh, back in 2016, that was a 5.8. That was a decent earthquake, that's for sure. Uh, far as the hazard map goes, the U.S. hazard map, plate dynamics out here around the uh, Wichita Mountains, right? There's fault systems up here. But once you get away from that, there's not many fault systems out here. These are all oil fields being affected. And, um, you know, again, that's, uh, that's something that we, we just got to deal with. Can be a little scary, uh, you know, a little bit of shaking going on. Uh, again, let me know if you felt this earthquake activity earlier this evening. Let me know where you're at. Again, right next to Arcadia Lake. But the uh, the activity and the location here speaks for itself. All right, backing out of here. See what else is going on here as um, far as any movement. Right now, these are the only two active spots away from the plate boundaries out here. Uh, we did have some activity earlier this morning into the uh, Montana area with a 3.3 Yellowstone National Park nothing shown up on it but I uh, guarantee you it probably picked up that 4.4 .4. um, on the seismographs let's see here okay this reading is going to be that uh, that 5.9 off the coast here of Alaska last night roughly coming up on 24 hours that four pointer 4.4 .4 looks like it may be right here like about an hour or so ago when we had that activity stirring up. It didn't really pick it up as much as I thought it would. Uh, this station did here at the promontory. Looks like it picked up that four-pointer nicely. Uh, again, there's always possibility of seeing some larger quake activity out there in Oklahoma, so just be prepared. Uh, but far as local seismic activity here at Yellowstone, uh, we do have one here around the Maple Creek area, it looks like. It's going to be this reading right here, I believe. Um... And that's localized there to the Yellowstone area, which they haven't picked up yet. I'll probably get to it tomorrow. Uh, West Coast activity, California-wise. Well, um, what you see what, is what you got out here. There's not a whole lot of activity stirring up here. In fact, the 2.5 map and above shows uh, just one three-pointer from this morning. And that is on the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault, creeping section of that plate boundary. Aside from that, all the quake activity, minimal. And uh, microquake. As far as global goes, uh, there's that five pointer from last night uh, up in the Alaska area. Uh, 5.9. Coming up on well, almost 24 hours there, and it'd be off the map. Uh, Alaska still seeing some activity across the Aleutian Trench. Handful of. Uh, uh, some, it looks like they've seen a four up there earlier this afternoon, or late afternoon as well, along the Aleutian Trench. A lot of microquake activity stirring up north. Uh, some of that deep as well so we'll keep an eye here on the west coast definitely uh, getting some strain out here against the north american plate uh, with the activity out in oklahoma as well uh, a couple earthquakes there in japan and um, you know aftershock activity is going to continue up here in this region but this newer earthquake down here uh, 4.7 55 kilometers deep uh, far as the tonga trench looks like we did have 4.8 deep activity once again 582 kilometers way down there earlier this morning we had one even deeper well below 600 kilometers so 
getting a lot of adjustment going on here with some surface adjustment in between these two deep quakes. So keep an eye upstream here uh, for some larger movement. It has been showing uh, some activity here recently at the shallow areas. And this region can see some, uh, some quite large earthquakes there. So keep an eye on that. Um, the rest of the globe here, let's see what else we got uh, across the area. 2.6 down in South America. Uh, not a whole lot going on through New Zealand currently. It looks uh, fairly quiet. The rest of the uh, globe here, Mediterranean, still seeing some activity out here. And one earthquake way north of Iceland, a 4.8. On that note, let's go check out the Iceland earthquake activity here. Refresh this, make sure we got the most recent data. Uh, only about 27 earthquakes here in the last 12 hours. So we're still watching this area down here across the Grindavik area of Iceland, up north here, north of Hagafell and near the Slingafell area. This is where that fissure activity opened up back in the middle of December, here a month or so ago now, and lasted for a couple days, a, couple, a little bit of fissure activity spewing out some lava, and uh, we're just watching it. GPS measurements continue to show inflation, and uh, we're at the level of inflation uh, higher than what we've seen uh, last month. This is the inflation data right here. Uh, this is a vertical displacement. We're continuing to go up and up and up. Uh, so keep an eye on that. Things are getting uh, elevated across that area, but uh, no earthquake activity to report. So that's a good thing. But I think uh, once we see uh, an uptick in earthquake activity, it's only a matter of hours um, prior to a fissure activity opening up. Uh, let's see, the big island of Hawaii, Another volcano out here kind of watching around the Kilauea volcano. Only four earthquakes. Goodness, that's very minimal. Uh, let's check out the volcano hazard map here uh, from the USGS in regards to this volcano on the big island of Hawaii. Uh, the tilt meter here. Another uh, useful tool to check the inflation there at the summit. This is the last 30 days. If we go back here. Well, if we go back to about 2018, you'll see that this is the highest level of inflation there across Kilauea Volcano since the 2018 eruption. So I think things are uh, getting ready to rock and roll there across that area. Minimal earthquake activity. We're really not seeing a whole lot of earthquake activity currently. Uh, a hand, well, maybe a couple earthquakes here on the map, but uh, it's fairly calm in terms of earthquake movement. All right, space weather activity. See if anything's going on here on the sun. We do have a very tiny coronal hole, number 92. Uh, I think Kevin said it kind of looks like a dinosaur here, right? Didn't he mention that? Let's see. Maybe that was on his Twitter account. But uh, yeah, we got a little coronal hole facing Earth. I don't think that's going to do anything in terms of the aurora potential here over the next few days. In fact, the aurora forecast looks very minimal here. Not a whole lot of potential. Although it looks like we're receiving some right now. A uh, little chance, it looks like, into the uh, Canada and Alaska area. Pending, you have clear skies, but really no major storms here in the forecast for the uh, space weather activity. Uh, currently flaring at a C1.6 C level, uh, which is a, a minor flare. We do have a newer sunspot region right here, it looks like. Um, let's see what it looks like as far as the latest imagery. Uh, it doesn't look all that impressive here, folks. Uh, in fact, none of these really look all that impressive in terms of complexity. We are noticing one little area down here that's shown a, a, a little bit of dynamic intermixing here of the magnetic fields within this core of the sunspot. We'll keep an eye on that. That is going to be number uh, 35, well, maybe 3552 or 3541. Hard to say, uh, but within this region right here. We'll keep an eye on it. Uh, overall threat right now, 99% chance for a C flare, M flare at 45. X flare still remains at 5% chance, but we're really not seeing that. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center out here, severe weather threat. Well, it looks like that's continuing somewhat into the night here across Florida um, with a 2% and 5% chance of tornado probability here uh, in Georgia as well, it looks like a portion of Florida. So I uh, just got that little severe weather threat here tonight. After that, things look like they mellow out in terms of severe weather. Uh, the numerical models out here, there's that low pressure system bringing in a lot of snow up here, colder air behind it. Goodness, going to get some, uh, some chilly temperatures out there uh, all across the center portion of the country. Um, 
Montana area, goodness, getting some uh, lows down in the negative 22 degree range. That is crazy. Uh, but either way, this low pressure system moves out. We do have another system here hitting California. Some decent rainfall here along the coast and somewhat inland. The Sacramento Valley here uh, where I live is probably not going to get too much activity. Uh, hopefully we'll pick up at least half an inch of rain after that. Well, you know, it's kind of a guessing game, but the models are showing uh, more uh, wetter, the wetter side of things uh, compared to the past couple runs I've looked at. So we might get back into uh, some rainfall for the West Coast. Hopefully we definitely need it. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Um, seismograph stations there look pretty calm, aside from uh, Yellowstone, showing a little bit of activity still. Um, I don't have any Oklahoma stations up here. I mean, I can uh, probably add one. I'll add one here after the update. But uh, let me know uh, where you're at, if you felt that earthquake in Oklahoma this evening, and uh, maybe felt, you know, if it was a rolling motion, a sudden jolt, uh, you know, a lot of people experience it differently, but it's uh, beneficial. Uh, for, for scientific data, for one, uh, to uh, review that information with regards to this little series of earthquake activity tonight in Oklahoma. So we'll continue to uh, watch that. Again, earthquake activity could, uh, you know, could see some more tonight. Stay safe out there. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow morning. It is Friday night, so uh, definitely a lot of crazy people out there. Have fun. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning for the uh, Saturday morning update.